Hi guys, IGCSE O level chemistry paper 22, November 2016, question 1. Particles moving very slowly from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Which process is being described? A liquid being frozen. So when a liquid is being frozen, the particles would stop moving. So it is definitely not a liquid being frozen. A solid melting. It is also not a solid melting because we would have particles from going from a stationary position into a moving position. So it is not a solid being melted. A substance diffusing through a liquid. Okay. If a substance is diffusing through a liquid, it would move very slowly, but from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. So yes, what is being described is a substance moving through a liquid. And the last one is a substance moving through a gas. The description would be the same, except that the particles will not be moving very slowly. They will be moving rather quickly. So since the term very slowly is used, it is not a substance diffusing through air. In fact, it is a substance diffusing through a liquid. So this makes option C the correct option for this question. Question two. A student mixes 25 cm cube samples of dilute hydrochloric acid with different volumes of aqueous sodium hydroxide. In each case, the student measures a change in temperature to test if the reaction is exothermic. Which piece of apparatus is not needed? A burette is needed to measure the volume of hydrochloric acid. Uh, in fact, uh, not the hydrochloric acid, the different volumes is of sodium hydroxide. So, burette will be used to measure the volumes of Sodium hydroxide. A uh, clock is not required over here. A pipette is required to measure 25 cm cube of HCl. And the thermometer is required to measure the temperature change. So the only piece of apparatus that will not be used would be the clock, making option B the correct option for this question. Question 3. A sample contains a mixture of powdered limestone, sugar, and wax. What is the correct way to obtain a pure sample of the sugar? Dissolve the mixture in dilute hydrochloric acid, filter, and wash the residue. No, 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 no. This is not it. If you dissolve it in hydrochloric acid, the hydrochloric acid will react with the sugar as well. So you will not obtain a pure sample of the sugar. So this is incorrect. Dissolve the mixture in hexane, filter and evaporate the filtrate. If we dissolve it in hexane, the wax might dissolve. And when we filter it, we get wax and partly sugar or maybe even sugar will be left as the residue. So this is not it. Dissolve the mixture in water. So sugar will dissolve and evaporate the filtrate. Okay, so when we dissolve it in water and when you filter it, the residue would be the wax and the limestone and the filtrate would be the pure sugar sample. And when we evaporate the filtrate, the water will be lost and sugar will remain. So this is the correct way of obtaining a pure sample of sugar. And the last one is dissolve the mixture in water, filter and wash the residue. So if we filter and wash the residue, we are not obtaining the sugar. We are obtaining limestone and wax by washing them. So this is not it. Therefore, the correct option for this question is option C. Question four, the table shows information about four different particles. What are the values of W, X, Y, and Z? Okay, so sodium has 11 protons and a nuclear number of 23. And the proton number is the number of protons. And the number of neutrons would be 23 minus 11, which would give us a value of 12. So this would eliminate options A and B. Next, we have Na positive ion, in which the number of electrons would be, now in Na, the number of electrons is 11. Then the number of electrons in Na positive, because one electron has been lost, would be 10. So this would eliminate option D. Next, we have oxygen atom, with the number of neutrons being 16 minus 8 is equal to 8. 
and then we have the O2 negative ion in which the number of electrons would be uh, eight uh, proton numbers is eight. So eight electrons plus there is a two negative charge. So plus two equals 10. So the value of W is 12, X is 10, Y is 8, Z is 10, making option C the correct option for this question. Question five, in which ionic compound do the metal ion and the non-metal ion have the same electronic structure? So that means that they should not belong to the same uh, period because if they belong to the same period, then their electronic structure would be different because the cation would lose electron and gain the noble gas configuration of the noble gas in the previous period and the anion would gain electrons and gain the noble gas configuration of the same noble gas in that period. So for this, calcium belongs to period 4 and oxygen belongs to period 2. So oxygen will gain the electronic configuration of period 2 and calcium will gain the electronic configuration of period 3 by losing its outermost electrons. So they don't have the same electronic structure. Potassium belongs to period 4 and bromine also belongs to period 4. So bromine will gain the electronic configuration of period 4, noble gas of period 4, while potassium will lose its outer electron and gain the electronic configuration of the noble gas in period 3. So they are not the same. Now magnesium belongs to period 3. So when it loses its electrons, it will gain the noble gas configuration of the noble gas in period 2. Oxygen belongs to period 2. It will gain the electrons and attain the noble gas configuration of the noble gas in period 2. So here we have both of the ions having the same electronic structure. And the final one, sodium and chlorine both belong to period 3. So when sodium loses its electron, it gains the noble gas configuration of the noble gas in period 2, while chlorine gains an electron and gains the noble gas configuration of the noble gas in period 3. So they are different as well. So as a result, the correct option for this question is option C. Question 6. The structure of methanol is shown. Which diagram shows the arrangement of outer shell electrons in a molecule of methanol? So carbon is forming a double bond with oxygen. So carbon and oxygen will share two pairs of electrons and it is forming a single bond with two separate hydrogen atoms. So it will share a pair of electrons with each hydrogen atom. But since carbon belongs to group four, it will have a total of four electrons, whereas Oxygen belonging to group 6 will only share two of its electrons, so it will have four unbonded electrons present. So option A gets eliminated because there are no unbonded electrons present in oxygen. Option B gets eliminated because hydrogen has additional electrons which are unbonded, which is not possible because hydrogen contains a total of one electron, which gets involved in bond formation. Uh, option C has four electrons for carbon, one electron for hydrogen, and six electrons for oxygen, two of which are taking part in bond formation and four of them are not. So this is the correct structure for methanol. And D is wrong because it has got an additional unbonded electron for oxygen and it only forms a single bond between carbon and oxygen. So for this reason, D also gets eliminated. Therefore, the correct option for this question is option C. Question 7. Iron is a metal. Its structure consists of a giant lattice of positive ions in a sea of electrons. Which statements about solid iron are correct? Iron conducts electricity because the electrons are free to move. Yes, that is why all metals conduct electricity. Iron conducts heat because the positive ions are free to move. No, the positive ions are not free to move and that is not the reason why heat is conducted. Iron has a high melting point due to the strong covalent bonds. Iron has metallic bonding in it, not covalent bonding. 
and iron is malleable because the layers of ions can slide over one another yes that is why it can be drawn into shapes since options 1 and 4 are correct option b is the correct option for this question question 8 which sample contains the greatest number of molecules so we have been given the masses or the volumes of different elements or compounds and we need to find out the number of moles the one having the greatest number of moles will have the greatest number of molecules so 4 gram of hydrogen so this is hydrogen gas so 4 upon 2 which is the mr of h2 will give us 2 moles of hydrogen in the case of 18 grams of water we would have 18 upon the mr of water which is also 18 which will give us 1 mole of water for 24 dm cube of oxygen we need to remember 1 mole of any gas at rtp occupies a volume of 24 dm cube so this is equal to 1 mole of oxygen gas and 66 grams of carbon dioxide would mean we divide 66 by the mr of carbon dioxide which is 44 and we end up with 1.5 moles of carbon dioxide so out of the calculated values the highest value is 2 moles which is for 4 grams of hydrogen making option a the correct option for this question question 9 sodium carbonate solution reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid the equation for the reaction is shown excess sodium carbonate is added to 10 cm cube of 0 0.1 mole per dm cube hydrochloric acid which volume of carbon dioxide gas is made so if we have the concentration and volume for hydrochloric acid so the molar ratio of hydrochloric acid to carbon dioxide is 2 is to 1 so first we find out the moles of hcl so the concentration is 0 0.1 moles in 1000 cm cube how many moles would be present in the 10 cm cube that we have used so this would be 10 upon 1000 into 0 0.1 which will give us 0 0.001 moles of hydrogen now for CO2, HCl is to CO2 has a molar ratio of 2 is to 1. Since the moles of hydrogen is 0 0.001, moles of CO2 would become half into 0 0.001, which will give us 0 0.0005 moles. Now, to calculate the volume, since the volume are given in centimeter cube, 1 mole of any gas has a volume of 24,000 cm cube. So 0 0.0005 moles would have a volume of 0 0.0005 upon 1 into 24,000, which would give us a value of 12 centimeter cube. This makes option A the correct option for this question. Question 10. Which apparatus could be used to electroplate an iron nail with copper? So in order to ele electroplate an iron nail with copper, it needs to be attached to the cathode. And during electrolysis, the cathode is the negative terminal. So this eliminates options B and D because the nail is attached to the positive terminal or the anode. So now between A and C, the difference is in the electrolyte. In A, the electrolyte is copper to sulfate and in C, the electrolyte is iron to sulfate. We need copper ions to be present in solution in order for electroplating to occur. So that makes copper sulfate the right solution and iron sulfate the wrong solution for this purpose. Therefore, the correct option for this question is option A.